Hello, and welcome to the next installment of Diversified's Quarterly Investment Review and Economic Update. My name is Mike Horwant. I'm the Chief Investment Officer here at Diversified Lifelong Advisors. And as we've done previously, four out of our 12 monthly videos are going to be centered around a quarterly economic update. The other eight are going to be centered around a specific asset class or investment theme that we want to highlight. So given that we just finished the first quarter, it's hard to believe, but let's jump into what we've seen from an economic and investment standpoint for the first quarter of 2021. The main theme that we can really stick to is that the previous nine months and the first three months of 2021 and really from 2020 into 2021, economic growth expectations have continued to rise. And as part of that, the market is pricing in a lot of good news and a market recovery. So equity markets have performed very well. So if you look over the last year uh, for the period ending uh, March 31st, returns are very impressive. They're, they're very, very quite large. Obviously, that's coming from a period of time where markets pulled back strongly from mid-February until mid to late March. Year to date, we've seen global markets up about 4 to 5%. U.S. markets have outperformed international uh, stock markets. And specifically, U.S. small cap has performed the best. So far this year, there's been a headwind for U.S. bonds, uh, specifically due to inflation concerns that we'll describe uh, in detail a little bit later. But there's been a little bit of a headwind from a bond standpoint. We've seen bond prices pull back a little bit as investors are concerned about inflation. So bond investors, I, I urge you to not you know, look too much into this. However, it's something to be aware of. It's something to understand for the first quarter. Uh, our expectations for the bond market, while maybe low single-digit returns is a is a an appropriate expectation, it's not a reason to abandon diversification. And there are ways that we believe that you can enhance your bond returns that we'll talk about a little bit later. So I think one of the big themes when we talk about equity markets performing well has been this rotation from what performed well from March through October to really since November what has actually performed well from a sector standpoint. There's been this rotation. What happened in November? Uh, vaccine distribution, or really vaccine uh, research came to fruition, along with the presidential election. So in November, there was this, this rotation of what was performing well. Early in the pandemic, it was stay-at-home stocks, it was Zoom, it was technology, it was e-commerce. Not that we don't think those have staying power and those can continue to perform well, but Going into November, as vaccines uh, were announced in a presidential election with fiscal stimulus being on the ballot, we've seen this rotation. And this rotation has been to more cyclical sectors, energy, to financials, to some more travel and entertainment, right? These types of uh, sectors that were really beaten down early in the pandemic. So it's been interesting to see in the chart I'm trying to show before and after that November time frame. It's very interesting to see how quickly that rotation happened and the magnitude with which it happened. So 2021 has been highlighted by fiscal stimulus. It's been highlighted by inflation concerns, but economic growth expectations increasing and continued low interest rates from the Federal Reserve. We've continued to see this global uh, equity growth in markets where not only in the U.S., but internationally equity markets have continued to push forward. We do expect through the second half of 2021 for economic growth to continue picking up. And we wouldn't be surprised to see somewhere around 6% growth uh, in 2021 for U.S. Stocks are still expensive. That's not a surprise. and shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Right now, bonds are also expensive. But given the expectation for economic growth, consumer spending, it's not a surprise that equity valuations continue to remain high. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, inflation concerns picked up. I'm going to speak about that a little bit and why it relates to bond investors. But inflation concerns picked up, which means uh, treasury yields increased. That means individuals were selling treasury bonds and their prices uh, were dropping. As their prices dropped, their yields increased. And we've seen a 10-year treasury bond go from a 0.9% yield to a 1.7%, 1.8% yield. That's a pretty big movement in a three month time period. And then as I just spoke about, there's been this rotation from more growth oriented stocks in sectors like technology, 
like healthcare, to some of the more cyclical sectors, right? The sectors that do well in the early part of an economic recovery, things like energy, things like financial, things like industrials, these types of sectors have performed well. And we do think that there's opportunity for those to continue performing well moving forward. So why does inflation matter to bond investors? I think that's a natural segue to the bond universe over the first quarter. Inflation is a headwind for bond investors. If you think about it, if a company, whether it's Apple, whether it's DuPont, they issue debt and they say, we're going to pay our our, uh, investors 3% on that debt that they're giving us capital, we're going to pay them 3% for that. That is a flat amount over a stated period. If interest rates rise during that period, the value of that bond has now pulled back. So why that matters is inflation is a mandate for the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve's job is to maintain low positive inflation targeted around 2% and maintain full employment, which is typically somewhere around 4% at least, if not below that. So a concern is if inflation picks up above that 2% threshold, the Federal Reserve may be expected or may feel its necessity uh, to raise rates quicker. If they do that, bond investors are concerned that their, their bonds become less valuable. That's why we've seen some bonds being sold off, some rotation out of fixed income, into equities, uh, rotation within equities to stocks that are going to perform better during a higher yield environment, which is financials, for example. We think these inflation concerns are a little bit overstated. We think the Federal Reserve is, is being honest when they say they have no interest or no expectation of raising rates in 2022, maybe even 2023, we'll see. But at least for 2021, Probably 2022, the Federal Reserve will keep rates uh, pretty low. And and they're, as most investors know right now, extremely low relative uh, to history. But as I said earlier, the 10-year Treasury rate has gone from 0.9% up to 1.7, a pretty rapid rise uh, in a three-month period. But we do expect that inflation remains pretty subdued. Our expectations are still right around the the Fed's target. And we don't really believe over the long term that the Fed's going to be pushed from an inflation standpoint to have to raise rates. It's something for us to keep an eye on, and this may change. But today, this is our position. So what are our expectations for 2021? And how does that translate to our portfolios? I think that's really important to talk about because markets are forward-looking. It doesn't matter necessarily where we've been. It matters where we're going. We need to position our portfolios appropriately. So we think that there's going to be this continued economic recovery. We're not really going out on a ledge saying that. That is the market's expectation. That's our expectation. At the second half of 2021, we're going to see corporate earnings continue to rise. We're going to see economic growth pick up. Well, we think 2022 economic growth won't be as robust, but it'll still be strong. We think that Uh, stock markets, while expensive, are still a good place to be. There's going to continue to be this slow return to normal. Vaccine distribution is vital, but we do expect that there'll be this a little bit return to normal. Travel entertainment will start to perform a little bit better. Uh, So that's something to keep an eye on with vaccine distribution and any additional waves of COVID cases. But I think it's pretty clear that we are light at the end of the tunnel. I think that's the best way to put it. So with GDP continuing, with rates remaining low being our expectation, with bond yields probably remaining pretty range bound, meaning if it's at 1.7 today, we would expect it to be in this 1.5 to 2% range, maybe drop to 125 potentially, but it'll be range bound. We don't expect massive movements in bond yields. So economic growth on the equity side, corporate earnings being strong, rates remaining low, bond yields remaining pretty range bound. What does that mean for for portfolios? If we're going to pick stocks or bonds, we do like stocks right now. We think they're, believe it or not, more appropriately valued or more reasonably valued. Bonds are still expensive. But we still believe that your risk tolerance and your goals need to drive how much risk you're willing to take. So even though I say we prefer stocks over bonds, it doesn't necessarily mean that we need to change our asset allocation based upon your risk tolerance or based upon your long-term objectives. We've been adding over the last six months to cyclical sectors. So sectors like financials, sectors like industrials. 
we don't think that technology is going away. Technology has staying power. It has global staying power. But we just think it's prudent to sell some of those really expensive tech names and buy into some of these sectors that have been beaten down, have lagged the market. We think there's opportunity here as the market returns to normal. Within bonds, we still prefer corporate bonds over government bonds. We still think it's a risk on type of environment. We need to be prudent by, about how much risk we're willing to take within our bond portfolios. But we do believe corporates over uh, government treasuries. And we're looking at these plus sectors. So when I say plus sectors, I'm talking about high yield. I'm talking about emerging market debt. I'm talking about bank loans. Those types of areas can be smaller allocations within our bond portfolio, and they can add value during a risk on uh, economic recovery. So that's how we're thinking about portfolios today. We do like uh, emerging markets as well within the equity space. So if we're looking at international and a silo, we prefer to be leaning towards emerging markets. So really in summary, we've experienced a broad-based rally. We've seen a rotation from some of those growthy sectors like technology to more of the cyclical type of sector like financials, energy, and industrials. A lot of this is driven by you know, fiscal and monetary stimulus. I don't think it's a surprise that the government has continued to be very accommodative, and that can be a tailwind during the early parts of economic recovery. So while bond yields have also risen from 0.9 to 1.7%, we don't expect that trajectory to continue. We expect it to be more range bound. Within our portfolios, we're going to lean uh, towards those cyclical sectors a little bit. We're going to sell some expensive tech names. We're going to keep our allocations to small cap, keep our allocations to emerging markets. We still believe in being diversified, but we're just tactically adding to some of these areas where we see opportunity. And in our bond portfolios, we think it's prudent to have a nice allocation to corporates over governments, a nice allocation to some of the plus sectors like high yield and emerging market debt to add a little bit of yield and during a, a very low yield environment, to add a little bit of diversification, and to add a little bit of growth opportunity. So I hope this has been helpful. I know it's a quick recap on a very complicated topic, but I hope you find these valuable. I appreciate everybody hopping on and, and listening to our video, and I look forward to our next month's video where we're probably going to discuss inflation in more detail. So it's a little bit of a spoiler alert there. For all of us here at Diversified, we appreciate the trust you put into our team. We do not take it lightly, and we hope that we're, we're showing you that we do not. As always, please stay healthy, stay wealthy, stay happy. Take care.